Monday, July 5th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at how central banking, the institution of central banking, uh, leads to oligarchy. Uh, before I go into the subject, though, I'd like to congratulate the President of the United States for saving Americans uh, 16 cents on their uh, 4th of July barbecue. There you go, uh, 16 cents, got a dime, a nickel, and a penny. That's how much you saved. Well done, uh, President uh, Biden. <laughs> and these are not even uh, pre-65 coins, so they're really worth just 16 uh, fiat currency cents. I'm sure it, it was great that you saved this. Of course not. It, it, it's a ridiculous statement, and I'm sorry uh, to hear that he, he made that statement, seeing that everything, the cost of living, is going through the roof for the general public. And of course, that's got to do with central banking. Uh, central banking is not a free market system. And uh, that's why when you listen to people question uh, Jay Powell uh, doing his uh, press conferences, you don't have any real economist, any free market economist out there asking questions because if I would be one of those reporters there for one of the major networks, I would ask him, how can you justify interfering in the free market? We're supposed to have a free market system, Mr. Powell, but no one ever asks uh, this question. And uh, be before I go a little further, I'd like to recommend uh, probably one of the arguably one of the best books about the Federal Reserve. There are some others that are older and looked into this subject prior to uh, Mr. Griffin. Uh, but yes, it's The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. A second look at the Federal Reserve. There you go. Uh, you need to read this book, in my opinion, if you want to know about the Federal Reserve. It is a long book. Uh, but it's pretty easy to read. It's got nice uh, illustrations as well. It's one of those books that you don't put down <laughs> until you finish reading. I, I will probably read it again. I, I read it many years ago. Uh, let's see, when, when was this uh, uh, bought? Uh, what uh, edition is this? Let me just check. This is the uh, 2003. Yeah. This is the 2003 one. So uh, I read it like over 15 years ago. It's probably about time I read it again, even though I remember most of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, oligarchy. So what is oligarchy? Uh, I know most of us know what it means, but uh, let's look at the real definition or the uh, dictionary definition. It says here, a small group of people having control of a country or organization, a country governed by an oligarchy. So uh, have you wondered uh, as well why inequality is growing so much? Why the uh, not even 1%, more like the 0.1% of people have most of the wealth now? Well, it's because they're connected to the central bank. Uh, even George Washington, uh, uh, founding father of the U.S., he he was a shareholder of the Bank of England. And how do I know that? Well, I went to the Bank of England Museum, and there is a dividend letter to George Washington uh, sent by the Bank of England. I, I didn't see what date that was, if it was before the revolution or after or during, who knows. But uh, the reason he was a shareholder was because his wife, Martha uh, Custis, she was a widow, and her husband, before George Washington, was a shareholder. So, yes, prior to the Bank of England uh, founding in 1694, there was no national debt. We are uh, told that uh, we need a national debt because without a national debt, you won't have any uh, wealth in the economy. The economy won't grow. But I, I think it's just uh, another Keynesian uh oligarchical created uh, fallacy <laughs> about the national debt. Um, 
Yeah, we don't need a national debt. All the national debt does is lumber the general public, uh, us that are not in the oligarchy, with a chain around our ankles uh, because we have to keep financing that national debt through taxation, through inflation. And uh, the other thing about central banks, why it's not a free market institution, is because it gives uh, like privileges to a group of people. And what is that privilege? Well, that privilege is that uh, when they make a profit, they keep those profits. When they lose out or when they're in danger of being um, bankrupted or put out of business, the government or you, the taxpayer, bails them out. And uh, through the central bank, they use the central bank as a way of uh, bailing out the system, uh, the bankers, the financiers, and they call that uh, the lender of last resort. <laughs> yes, uh, Badgett in the 1800s, a UK uh, economist or writer said, is it Walter Badgett, that the central bank is a lender of last resort. It sounds all really great, doesn't it? A lender of last resort, but who's really bailing out uh, those banks or institutions. It's you through the national debt. And that's why I, I saw it coming, uh, especially after 08, when the national debt increased dramatically to bail out the banks again uh, through the central bank. I said, uh, the general public is going to be uh, swindled again, and people are going to start to get angry. And they are, I think, right now, even though they're getting angry about something else right now, the crisis that these same uh, oligarchical types have created, because they know their system is uh, in a precarious situation, because it's a debt-based system, and, and they've overdone it, of course. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's an oligarchy, it, uh, and, and uh, it's getting worse and worse. And I'll give you an example of how bad it is in the UK, because we get politicians, especially from the labor side, saying that uh, uh, they, they need to uh, tax people people whose homes have gone up a lot in value, you know, a property tax, a real estate tax. And, and I'll show you how much of uh, another uh, scam that is. Uh, this article here is from 2019. Uh, it's in the Daily Mail, and, and I see very few people talking about it in the mainstream media. I know it was two years ago, but that there was uh, very little uh, talked about. Uh, very few people covered it. And it says how half of England is owned by less than 1% of its population, with oligarchs, city bankers, and aristocracy among those with an astonishingly unequal share so uh, you would think that uh, the general public would own most of the land in this country, but it's not. And we'll come to how much really uh, people like me or, or you out there in the UK who's watching me, uh, people who own a home, yes, that has gone up in value a lot, but we don't own that much. So uh, it says here, a research revealed around 25,000 landowners control half of England. About 30% of the country is owned by aristocracy and 18% by corporations. Uh, the Queen and Royals hold around 1.4% and the public sector, 8.5%. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down here to the part where it talks uh, about homeowners, how much we own. And, and and they come out and talk about that that we need a, a property tax because house prices have gone up so much. Well, the only reason house prices have gone up is because the currency has been uh, <laughs> debased so much that bricks and mortars look good compared to the Bank of England note. And, and the currency has been debased because uh, we've been uh, bailing out the bankers through the Bank of England. I know this is the Federal Reserve, but it's the same mechanism. The Bank of England is bailing out the people who have most of the land, and they still want us 
uh, to pay the taxes upon it. <laughs> so homeowners, believe it or not, only own 5% of England. <laughs> there you go. So uh, that just goes to show you when even people like Jeremy Corbyn, who are supposed to be uh, staunch labor, uh, and labor is supposed to be a party for the people. He thinks uh, we need a, a tax on people uh, people's homes, even though we own only 5% of the land, right? Uh, they should look more into uh, the other part uh, parts of society that own most of the property for taxation, even though personally, I think taxation is wrong. Uh, taxation, of course, is legal plunder, as uh, Frederick Bastia would say. So there you go. That That's what leads to oligarchy. When you give preferential treatment to one group of people. And I notice now with this uh, global corporate tax that uh, the UK government, which is not really run for the general public, it's run for the oligarchs, uh, they've gotten a preferential treatment for the city of London, for the Bank of England, for the people in the city who control the money, so they won't be uh, liable to this minimum global tax. Why? Well, because uh, they're in charge <laughs> and they get preferential treatment. Are we going to get a preferential treatment for our taxes? Of course not. Our taxes will go up. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 7.53 a.m. London time. Uh, Billy is up. <laughs> yeah, he he's... Uh, it's tough to get him up sometimes in the morning. This morning he got up quite easily. Uh, we'll go out for a walk later on. Uh, so we got spot gold at 1790. It's up just over a dollar. Range has been 1783 to 1792. Silver is up 10 cents or 0.4 of a percent at 2655. Range has been 2660 to 2636. Thou future. Uh, down 60 points. NASDAQ 100 future down 25. S&P down 7. The currencies. Sterling is up slightly this morning at 138.42. Uh, the euro is unchanged virtually 118.62. The dollar is down very slightly versus the yen. Uh, just around 111. And the dollar is down... Uh, 0.2 of a percent versus the yuan, Chinese yuan at 646.20. Uh, the uh, Aussie dollar is uh, down slightly at 75.24. WTI crude is unchanged, 74.87. And the uh, high grade copper is up actually 1.5%. High grade copper. Haven't seen a move like that in a while. Uh, so it's at 433.71. And the highly manipulated uh, uh, central bank monetized 10 year no yield is at 1.43%. Uh, and that's unchanged. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great start to the week. Take care. Bye.